All right, Roses, let me play the audio, right? And then we can go over it. In case you haven't seen it, this is an important story about Jerry Jones in the 50s. He is right there. He was in the crowd as a bunch of white supremacists along with media, as you could see, which by the way, by the way, if one of these companies, I'm gonna zoom in here. If one of these companies designed a camera that looked like this, they would make a killing right now. Jerry Jones, right there, was spotted in the crowd with a bunch of white supremacists who confronted black students at North Little Rock High. Um, this is in the 50s, uh, 1957. He is from Arkansas. His track record shows he does not value a black person to be head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Not a hot take. Literally his history, the proof is in the pudding. So Stephen A. Smith, here is what he said of Jerry Jones, because he has to. I'm pissed off, but not for reasons that people would think. I'm very, very fond of Jerry Jones, and I'm not hiding that from anybody. Is his record perfect? No. But I'm pissed off because he doesn't deserve what just happened. He doesn't deserve it. One report, our report, said he was 14 years old. Yeah. Another report said he was 15 years old. At minimum, that's 65 years ago. You're going to bring up a picture of Jerry Jones standing at this protest. No question what was happening is not something that anybody as a black person should be appreciative about. We had six students at that particular North Little Rock High School that was trying to desegregate the school. No one should it be was, okay it was, with it, it. Nobody should be okay with that. Regardless of We race. understand that. We get all of that. We also understand what we as black people and as black folks, black men have to deal with. And by the way, to some degree, we still deal with a lot of things and we all know it. Mm -hmm. Racism is alive and well. Bigotry and prejudice is alive and well. We get all of that. But you're going to bring up a photo of him yeah. when he was 14, 15 years old, 65 or 66 years ago. We this is this is where cancer culture gets into the mix and you're making an attempt to eradicate him, what he stands for, and all he has done. And by the way, I don't have a problem with the photo. Yep. I don't have a problem. If he was 30, 35, 40 years old, that's different. Right. 14, 15 years old. 14, 15 years old. Right. But we're going to lean on somebody when he was 14, born and raised in the South, and we're going to pick it up 66 years <laughs> later to say, you know something? Yeah. You ain't hire a black coach. I think that's pretty low. I really, really do. I think that's. I think that part is pretty low. If he were an adult, yeah. that would be different. But a 14, 15 yeah. year old kid raised in the South who literally is just standing there yeah. looking, and we use that to bring up in the year 2022. Oh, this is where you are. You got to explain this. You ready to explain what you did when you were 14? I personally would make the argument that when I was 14 or 15, I didn't try to block black students from integrating in a high school in the South. But for Stephen A. Smith to defend Jerry Jones, let me make this crystal clear jerry jones and stephen a smith have a relationship that a lot of people including jeff perlman who wrote football for a buck which uh went over how donald trump ruined the united states football league if you've no idea what i'm talking about check out our clips on demand and he and i agree on a lot of things but one thing that i do agree on him on with him is the lack of journalistic integrity. I need to make this very clear. Stephen A. Smith is an entertainer, guys. He threw his journalism career out the window a very long time ago to become the highest paid employee at the worldwide leader. He even admitted that this is entertainment. I want to say five days ago, 
when he told Molly Kiram, like, keep up, Molly. He knows what it is. They have a unique relationship in that Stephen A. Smith will arrive to first take in Jerry Jones's personal helicopter. I'll get back to this in a second, but what really irked me about Stephen A. and showed me a lot was when he did not take Colin's side, Colin Kaepernick, that is, until it was comf until the conversation shifted and evolved into you can't not see it, and then he did. He somehow got his hands on Colin Kaepernick's workout waiver and then also Colin Kaepernick's rookie uh, going into his rookie year waiver. How he got that, I believe, first off, you have to narrow it down into who are the people that are very anti-cap, and one of them was Jerry Jones. And it is my belief that because of Stephen A. Smith's relationship with the hierarchy of NFL owners, specifically the most powerful sports owners, arguably on, not the planet, in the United States of America, especially with the most val valuable franchise in America. And if you've seen a lot of his players and some of his coaches, one you see on Sunday Night Football and Jason Garrett, have a pipeline from becoming Dallas Cowboys to being on air at some of the biggest networks. And I believe Jerry Jones holds a lot more power than people would put on and like to believe. And I believe that there is a connection because a lot of the stuff that Jerry expressed, Stephen A would back just in different wording. But the point about he was 14 or 15 years old. So there is no honesty there. I told you he came around. It just got to the point where, as Martellus Bennett put it at one, at, at some, uh, some time ago, kneeling has become acceptable. That's that era where Stephen A. bought in. This is something I believe that is indefensible to be an anti-segregationist blocking the doors of a school for black kids to go to now is there potential okay let's just say potential that in this photo jerry jones just went to go to see there is but in these times in 1957, I don't see it. He was told not to go by his football coach. He went anyway. This angry mob of white supremacists did what they felt they had to do. And young Jerry was there. I think we would have to be naive to not think a certain way. But what I don't like about Stephen A is that he is not jumping. He is not rushing. He is steamrolling to Jerry Jones' defense. Why? Why is he the first one to defend Jerry Jones? Makes you think. What does he have to prove to Jerry Jones? What loyalty does he have to prove? I do not respect what he said on first take. I don't respect his opinion on this specifically. Frankly, I think it's weak. Great juxtaposition to the cap thing. I mean, thanks, but like, that tells you a lot, doesn't it? When someone is so anti somebody and you even saw it, no bull on Bill O'Reilly's show when Stephen A. Smith showed up and they agreed on it. They agreed. How do you agree with Bill O'Reilly on black football players kneeling by because they're saying, you know what's really f***ed up? Systemic racism and... Police killing unarmed black people. Last I checked, which was eight hours ago, mappingpoliceviolence.org said black people are 2.9 times more likely to be killed by police than white people. Shouldn't happen. But you know who said, as long as you're a member of the Cowboys, you don't take the knee and you toe the line. That would be this guy. Jerry Jones. I, I'm I'm having trouble with the people who say change man. Um first off, the the change man front, which I already dispelled, I'll go over one more time. You've never had 
a black head coach. Not once. It shows that you will allow a black coach to be a coordinator. But you won't give him the keys. Why is that? This man thinks he's the smartest one in the room at all times. He's not smart. He's just a billionaire who has power. A writer who I respect is Karan J. Phillips. I haven't seen his piece, but I saw he tweeted this. So let's read it all together. According to the policy, Jerry Jones hasn't done anything wrong. That's because anti-blackness is never a crime. A recent report from the Washington Post shows Jones in a photo from 57 in Arkansas among a crowd of white students standing on the front lines of one of Little Rock's excuse me, darkest segregation clashes, reads the secondary headline from the publication. At the time, white students and some adults were showing up at school entrances, usually to hurl racial slurs in an attempt to intimidate black students and prevent them from entering public schools after the Brown v. Board decision. These are the undeniable facts of American history that so many are trying hard to expunge by standing against critical race theory, or CTR, as Herschel Walker would say. By the way, if you're in Georgia, please vote. Because in this country, racism isn't real unless there's a smoking gun. One of the most prestigious newspapers in America has found an old photo of the owner of the world's most valuable sports franchise. Being at a place where racists were known to congregate. And there's nothing Roger Goodell and the NFL can do about it. Why? Because a league with a racist history that is currently being sued for its racist hiring practices was smart enough to create a code of conduct policy where the owners are supposed to be held to a higher standard that didn't list being hateful to black people as an infraction. The possible violations include things like violent crimes, SA, C abuse, and DV. These are the things that the NFL should rightfully stand against. Racism is conveniently missing from the list. However, that convenience becomes a calculated move when you realize that the league's conduct committee is made up of NFL owners. There's no way that a group that's never allowed a black person into their exclusive club would ever bring punishment on one of their own for being involved in something hateful to black people. If that were to happen once, the floodgates would literally open wide. We have seen the mistreatment with Brian Flores. We have seen the mistreatment with Colin Kaepernick. We have seen concussion payouts. Uh not become prevalent because of racist practices in medicine. Never forget that Jones serves as Dan Snyder's best friend in the NFL, has never hired a black coach, and was vehemently against players kneeling to bring awareness to police brutality and racism. But this is racism, which means the rules are different. Despite how damaging the feelings and inferences may be, no matter how your gut might be telling you, history has proven that white people and some black ones too will deny racism in every form, from microaggressions to pictures of NFL owners being in environments of hate until a smoking gun has been found to officially deem it as racist. It's why so many people, so many in the sports world have been silent about Jones. They don't think anything of the picture or the damage from what, the, what that moment caused then and now. And the ones that have spoken out have decided to be on the wrong side of history. And this is where he mentions Smith. Jones would say of the photo, it's not who I am, I'm sorry. That apology wasn't for the photograph. It was from a 2017 story in which Jones was sorry for what he said in the past. Jennifer, congratulations on the wedding. Now, you know he's with a black girl tonight, don't you? Said Jones in a 2013 videotape message to a white bride. His explanation slash excuse for being in the photo. That was, gosh, 65 years ago? And I was a curious kid at the time. I didn't know at the time the monumental event really that was going on. I'm sure glad that we're a long way from that. Jones wants us to believe that the black children who were making history understood the magnitude of the moment, but yet he didn't. Even though so many white students of his age group were against it, he thinks we're stupid and is insulting our intelligence and knowledge of history. The tweet right there that I see, I was also going to read. Um, it's from David Dennis Jr. I know far too many black people who were 14 and 15 on the other side of those Jerry Jones picks who are still feeling the effects of that terrorism. But by all means, let's feel sorry for the billionaire whose only consequence will be having to answer some questions about it. 1,000%. Now, as I get back to Stephen A., I am continually perplexed at this man's priorities. But I need to be very clear about this. There is... The club, right? It's the club that George Carlin talked about. It's the club that we all talk about many times. 
It's a big club, and what? You ain't in it. Stephen A. has gotten in the club through billionaire acceptance like Jerry Jones. Stephen A. Smith cries cancel culture over viral Jerry Jones. Cancel culture? Do you know? First off, I don't believe in it. I've talked about this many times. There is no such thing. If that were the case, Donald Trump would have canceled Macy's. He would have canceled Starbucks. He would have canceled Rosie O'Donnell. He would have canceled the Atlanta Braves. He would have canceled the Cleveland Guardians. How they almost tried to cancel democracy. Dave Chappelle wouldn't have a special where he makes $40 million or whatever. It doesn't exist. I think there are consequences if you say something stupid. Cancel culture is a risque term that Republicans took and ran on. And you see it in all of those good liar videos. There's one side spewing it. Anyways, why are you defending this man? I would argue because your life depends on it. That's why.